this is going to be what sold for me on my various reselling platforms for the week of September 15th to September 21st, 2021. This is going to be a short video because <laughs> the universe was like, oh, you did so well the week before. Let's, uh, let's dial that back. So <laughs> we're gonna start with my uh, lowest performing platform and then work our way up. But I should like to say that I do also sell on Amazon and Etsy as well, and those had no sales, so that's why they're not going to be included. <clears throat> but I did make a sale on Poshmark, which was uh, unusual, because I have put, I can't say no effort into Poshmark, because I have remembered to like share half of my closet once a week, every week for like the last month. But that's how little effort I am putting into Poshmark and I have maybe listed two or three other things on there. So minimal effort. So when I woke up to this sale, I sold a vintage wool Pendleton skirt for $20 and on Poshmark, the buyer pays for shipping. So I paid $4 for this at a thrift store. So after Poshmark takes its fees, then I'm left with a $12 profit, which is pretty great. And I'm really happy. And I hope the person that bought this really likes it because it was a beautiful skirt. I would have kept it, but it was a little bit too big for me. And then we're gonna move to eBay. So I have been trying media out. Uh, it's a little bit difficult in my area because there are a lot of Amazon FBA sellers here. Uh, so, I don't get very many opportunities, so I figured I'd give it a try, and I did not do a good job. So I bought this for a dollar. I mean, it technically sold for three, so I doubled my money after fees and shipping, because the buyer also paid for shipping. But yeah, I don't know why I thought this was going to do better, but then when I actually looked at comps, it did not do as well as I thought. I was looking up, I guess, a different video than this one. Then I sold this beautiful vintage sweater. This is a men's large. I bought this thinking that it would sell when I purchased it because oversized sweater vests were like in at that moment, plus also the rainbow aesthetic as well. But it, it, didn't, it didn't sell until it got cold again. So it did sell for $12 and the buyer paid for shipping. I only paid $4 for this, so still a win, just a, a longer win. I do like to share with y'all both my positives and my negatives, and you saw that with the Dudesons video, even though that technically is a positive. I bought this belt. I have a tendency to buy ribbon belts when I find them because most of them are vintage and most of them sell pretty well and belts in general are pretty cheap. But when I picked this up, I saw it was new with tags and it was Ralph Lauren, and I was like, oh, that's awesome. I did not realize until I measured it and looked at the tag a little bit more than a cursory glance that it was actually a kid's belt, which is why it did sell for my full asking price of $9.87 and the buyer paid for shipping, but it took a long time to sell and uh, it would have sold for more if it was not a children's belt. This was a, a surprise for me. So I recently picked up a thread up shoe box despite my not really great success with them <laughs> prior. And when I got this pair of Born Penny Loafers, I did not think that they would sell as fast as they did. They, they've sold faster than the Nike ones I thought would go immediately. But they sold on an offer. I sent a 15% off offer and someone purchased it at, for $16.89 and they paid for shipping. I hope they enjoy them. And I have made half of my money back from that box off of the Allbirds and those shoes. So I will link that video if, up above if you're interested in watching it. But my last sale to share with y'all is this antique RS Prussia Redmark teacup and saucer. I picked that up in a recent video. I think, uh, not my last video, but the video before that where I went to an antique store kind of shared my day with y'all. I'm sorry the light keeps changing. Uh, I'm using natural light because I just don't feel like dealing with my light boxes right now. So if that's been distracting and you don't watch this all the way through, I totally understand. <laughs> but I've talked about RS Prussia on this channel before. 
Uh, I actually today passed up some RS Germany pieces. So RS Prussia is uh, pre-World War I, so before 1914. That's why it was still called Prussia. And uh, RS Germany mark is for 1914 to 1945, so basically World War I to World War II. And uh, that mark went away because, you know, Germany got divided after the Second World War. So, uh, I feel like I'm giving you more exposition than is necessary for this teacup, but I picked it up for $8.99. It sold, I took an offer $25 and the buyer paid $10 for shipping. It did not cost $10 to ship this. Um, it cost like $8, but eh. And um, I'm trying out the flat rate shipping, but this sold within two hours of me listing it. I will gladly accept an offer of more than double my money uh, almost triple my money on this and I'm really happy and hope it goes off to a new home. I did get a note just like last sales thing. I got a note except it wasn't about the color. It was please pack carefully, which makes me sad because I'm not going to take it the way that the last note I got was I just to me that means that somebody has purchased beautiful items before on eBay and they have not arrived safely, but I am a very good packer. And I do hope that this gets there safely. It should, I double boxed it and extra wrapped it. I, I will note, I would like to say that if you're going to sell antiques, it is pertinent to give as much information as possible. So for this one, you know, I denoted that it was the RS Prussia Red Mark, which is the most valuable one or the one that's most col often collected, which means it has the red star up top uh, the mark, which I will put a picture up over here. And then I also identified the flower. That's something else I would recommend doing. Most of these uh, these antique RS pressure cups do have a flower on them. If you are not someone who knows a lot of botany or cares about flowers at all, it's still good to try to figure out what flower it is. This particular flower is called Lily of the Valley. Um, a quick a uh, poignant Google search will <laughs> help you a lot. I literally just typed tiny white bell-shaped flowers and the flower came up. I had no idea what it was. Even though as much Animal Crossing as I play, I should have known it was a lily of the valley. <laughs> but there's that. Um, I feel like I already gave you some history information um, talking about RS Prussia, so I hope you will forgive me. I'm tired and I don't feel like giving you your history fact other than pertinent to what I sold. So I'll, I'll, I'll make it up to you next time. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you on the next video, hopefully with a lot more gusto and uh, energy and less weighing down from my nine to five. But till then, bye. bye. Also, this is how Moxie has looked at me the entire time I have filmed this video. Just, just the most elegant lady. <laughs>